follow the August meeting of the uh, Parsifal Trousel County Planning Commission to order. Shutter, would you call the roll, please? Heather Bay. Mr. McCartney. Katie Dillon. Mitch Gregory. Rosa. Thomas Harper. Here. John Curtis. Here. Rosalie Mike. Here. David Nolan. Here. David Thomas. Here. Cal Welch. Here. Okay. We have I think just one absent. Next on our agenda is the approval of minutes. Uh, we've all had that for enough time to have looked over it and read it carefully. Uh, does anyone have any corrections or additions or anything at all that needs to we need to talk about about last month's minutes? Right. Mitch makes a motion to approve. David makes a second set motion. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, please say no. Does pass unanimously. Not much on the agenda tonight. That's two months in a row. I guess things are actually really slowing down. Maybe for planning, but not for planning. Okay. Okay. Well, that uh, that's a good that's a good answer. Actually, you know, it, it shows that things that we have approved in the past are moving along at their pace and and, and stuff. You know, and uh, uh, and that's the way it is. And and uh, kind of gives us as planners the opportunity to kind of catch our breath as we get ready to uh, hopefully uh, recommend some some policies and stuff to the county commission and uh, you know uh, get things moving in a in a direction that uh, hopefully we can uh, help with the management of our with our, our account and city moving forward. Uh, so the only item on new business is, is election of officers. I would be remiss not to note that the uh, current chairman was late tonight. Wasn't noticed because uh, the meeting before that. So please feel free to uh, chastise him by electing someone else. <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there are two, it's a blue moon month, so who knows? I really have thought for years that Mr. Thomas Harper would make a great chairman, and he has negated that by quitting. <laughs> 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 Actually, retiring. But tonight is the election of officers, and the officers that we will be elected tonight are chairman, vice chairman, and secretary. And so, uh, do we have a particular order you want to go in? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't think we uh, make a motion that we leave it all out. It's just like right there. On. Is it open? Can we do it that way? Uh, I don't know if it had to be. Do what? Second that. Is that okay? Mm hmm. Can we do that? <laughs> well, just because we've done it, don't make it right. I don't mind shortcut. I just want to make sure they're right. You know, uh, we do have a motion by Mr. Nolan to uh, keep the current chairman, vice chairman, and secretary. Uh, did I get a second? Heather, did you second? I do have a, a second by Miss Bay. Any discussion? Usually this is when the current officers try to weasel their way out. <laughs> I was doing before. All right, hearing no discussion. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, please say no. It does pass unanimously. Uh, <laughs> Our secretary's got a funny bone. Yeah. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. I just couldn't help but notice how you were, it seemed like you were implying to have someone to say no. <laughs> I have voted but, uh, against myself before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah several times. <laughs> yeah. But I, I I just, why why fight the, the wall, you know? <laughs> but that is true. Yeah, I have voted against myself many, many times. Uh, 
the main reason for our uh, business items tonight are our discussion items. First one is a definition of adult-oriented establishments. We had talked last month about this, and we got what was looked to be a uh, good example out of Cheatham County. And so uh, David has kind of spearheaded this with uh, looking through all this. So I'm going to turn this discussion part to this part over to, to David. And Rosalie, you weren't able to get a, a printed copy of for me on that. Um, so what I ended up doing based on the motion that was made and uh, and I didn't have a, a printed copy out for codes and zoning on Thursday night either. Um, but it's just, I took just word for word the definitions straight out of Cheatham counties and sent them to Rick, sent them to Mr. Beller, um, Rick Gregory from the minutes. Um, and Amy just formatted them, had to change some references so that everything correlated for our purposes, but left it all word for word. Um, I will state that if you go on to Cheatham counties and you look at their definitions on adult entertainment, they are graphic. They are very blunt and specific. So it doesn't really. They don't want somebody catching them with the technicality. Do yes. Did you pull it up? Uh, that? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like reading an X rated it's, show or something. It, it is explicit. Um, but yes, it, it does it, it does make it very um, precise. Uh, this is what we are saying adult entertainment is. And this is what it would, you know, this is the limits we're wanting to put on that as far as location. Well, again, to uh, to make sure that all bases are covered and that type of thing, it probably needs needs to needs to be that way. We don't want to get blindsided by by anything. I, I still think that some of us on the planning commission were somewhat blindsided by the rock quarry. Was that last year or year yeah, before last year? It was last year. And um, mm -hmm. you know, it seemed like people, some people knew about this before. Uh, a lot, most of us, if not all of us, because I knew I, I didn't know anything about it until it was presented. Um, and, and that's, you know, you can't manage things when, when things are done that way. It's yeah. not, it's just not good business. And we need to make sure that we're able to do something because if this, someone tries to do this, you're looking at First Amendment issues and some things like that. And that's going to relate to probably television coverage and major coverage from other, you know, outlets. And uh, we just want to need to make sure we're good. We're, you know, we're good with it. And the reason I went with um, Rick Gregory's suggestion of hooking Cheatham counties was one, because of how closely it just mimics what the state already has in place that we didn't opt into. So it kind of corrects that situation for Charlesdale County but it's already been pushed against. And so there's already some legal action and it stood and, and everything was good on their end. So if they've already done that, it just makes sense that why would we want to recreate the wheel and take those chances yeah. and make yeah. those errors that yeah. we know have already been fixed. They've uh, swallowed one of the bullets for us, so to speak, and, and uh, had it tested. So uh, it didn't that's cost us anything. I mean, that's, you know, it's just good. You know, that would give our judges around here a precedent to refer to uh, uh, if something like that were to happen. So that's always good. Uh, so, uh, do we have this tonight in a resolution type form that we to send to the county court, or are we to that point yet? I don't believe we do. Um, what's came out of codes and zoning was just the yes, just added what I had added there. Yes, go ahead and just, that's what we want to send through. Okay, so um, basically it's before us tonight to vote on is if we agree with this and want to uh, send it to the county commission as a resolution or, or just that we agree with the zoning committee, your committee, and it will come out of your committee to go to the county commission. I don't know at this point if there's any action for this committee to take. Okay, that's fine. That's what I'm asking. We, we passed a motion to have that done in codes and zoning. Right. I'm just reporting that it has been done and, and this is where I got okay. those definitions. And, okay. Um, and well, if you would like a, a vote to show our support for you, 
Okay. For that, I don't mind doing that. I think, you know, uh, somebody might on the commission might stand and say, well, what the planning commission say about it? Again, I think this is important. And I, I think this is good. And, and but whatever I, we need to do is. is you know, this body's already made the motion and stated that's what you wanted done. Okay. So this would just be, like I said, it's just me letting y'all know that it has been done in codes and zoning. They passed it and said, yes, they want to go to the full commission. Sounds good. Um, Sounds good. Anybody have any questions or discussion about this? Uh, uh, particular uh, definition? I, or? Do, I do have a question. Yes, ma'am. You'll know that it's just about the way you can hear, but it also says they have adult entertainment at oriented establishments. Okay. This yeah. is what you have that's presented to us as adult oriented establishment, but they had one more paragraph right above it that was adult entertainment. I didn't know if you needed to include that or not. I just want to bring that to the table. And it's actually much more of a vague description of the big description of the oriented. So, Let's see if I can pull it up in emails with Ms. Thomas and this is all of the Cheatham County websites. Yes, but what um she already has it in a uh, an ordinance form. Okay. If I can find that copy and then I can answer that question better for you. I just want to make sure we didn't need anything. That's the one You can build the entertainment offers. You can know. Yeah. Adult yeah, entertainment versus adult oriented establishment, which is Conversation we're talking about. Here. Well, maybe David could Absolutely. find that and then he could email it to everybody. Oh, and then, yeah. Those of you with phones, I, I left late. I don't have my phone with me tonight. Which I'll give you a chance to look at it. you young ones. That, you young ones that don't know me too well anyway. My phone stays turned off most of the time. <laughs> I tell people on the school board and the school, if you really need to talk to me, you need to call my home phone. <laughs> Yeah, they, so they do have a great description of everything here. <laughs> this has the, I mean, a great collective decision. So, <laughs> <what's> the, <laughs> what I'm just giving them the Maybe there's a lot of fine print in there. There's a lot of fine print, but there's one Maybe paragraph that's above the fine print. Have they got, a, <laughs> have they got they an establishment like, there? I do <laughs> um, what I do, what I have found is just original. They didn't have the definitions on it. And in the original ordinance, <laughs> oh um, it does. So far, it is set as uh, it starts on as theirs as First Amendment protected adult entertainment businesses, and so it does include both. So okay. go above that one. So that includes adult entertainment and adult organizations. Correct. Okay. Just want to make sure you didn't need us to add yeah. that and, in there. From the and everyone point. should have a copy of that that I emailed to everyone um, for last month's meeting. And the definitions are the only thing that I've changed. Okay. Yeah, per the motion that was made last month. Thank you for your yours and your committee's hard work on this. And uh, you do have the support of this committee. And uh, so hopefully all of us working together can get this passed through the county commission. Any other questions about this before we move on to the next item? Okay, next on our agenda is the ADA parking requirements and state and federal requirements and 2018 uh, industrial building codes. Oh, international, I'm sorry, it's international. And you do have that in front of you. You know, we had put this in our, uh, in a form, the resolution that we sent to the county commission. And I think several of them said it's already in there anyway. And uh, technically, ours had kind of, kind of made it more just put it into our own. It would have, it would have put it into our own rules and regulations and stuff. And uh, uh, it's not that we were really trying to make it any tougher than the, than what the government has. I mean, it's federal law. They're they're going to go by it. It's just that we were trying to spell it out more in our own, you know, in our documents and that type of thing. Uh, but, you know, what was interesting was that during the BZA discussion for the uh, Dollar Tree that's coming in, they were counting all the parking places and they noticed that there was only two ADA parking places and they said, well, why isn't there more? If you think about it, the community is getting older and we may need more ADA parking places. Why isn't there more? And it's like, well, you know, it kind of 
it fits what the description is, but we really didn't have anything in our ordinance that we could find at that time that really spelled out exactly what the federal regulations were. But so here's a copy of the um, ADA from the government. And you know, our ordinances, we can suggest that they be more, that they have more parking places. You know, this, this is, there's a difference to me in suggesting and being able to enforce. You know, that's why we were trying to put it into ours. Exactly. Yes, sir. In talking with uh, Rick Gregory, as we've been going over the um, cleaning up and combining of the urban and the rural uh, ordinances, um, something that he's pointed out is the use of appendix. And I think that's really going to help us in even this situation here with this. Instead of trying to pass it as just a standalone ordinance that slides into zoning, that we could actually put it as an appendix to the zoning. And therefore, as the national standards were to change, then we could change that one appendix and not have to change the whole ordinances. Um, we're going to look at doing that with the floodplain um, ordinances that we have. It's going to, we're going to kind of fold that into as an appendix. So as those floodplains change, which they do every so many sure. years, sure. then it gets updated and you're not having to track through everything in each zoning and how that- Will the county commission have to pass all of those they appendixes? Would. Yep. I think that they would be more apt to pass something like that than actually changing the regulation. I mean, you, you know, an appendix is normal. You go there for definitions and that type of stuff and everything. And since the standing of the commission when we brought this forward was, well, it already exists in federal law, great. And all we're doing is here it is as an appendix right. explaining to the residents in our format what that would be. And maybe that would be a little more palatable. I think so. And, and it gives our coach pe people yep. the, the uh, authority to enforce it. And it gives the citizens a quick reference. Sure. Who are sure. wanting to do something on their property. Yeah. Some developer somewhere can come in and see and already know. Yeah. That's cool. Questions? We're fortunate that we have Rick helping us as a county. His knowledge of the, you know, Rick, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he was our planner for a few years here. And, and uh, but his knowledge and experience in this is unsurpassed. Any discussion, questions, or anything? So is there any uh, action that we need to take on this, David? Um, at this point, I don't think there is. Um, when we get that fully completed, uh, I was talking with Amanda, it looks like the progress we're making. Um, we ought to have, hopefully by our January meeting, have a completed set to come before this body for review. And then whether we wait until the February, depending on you know what actions we take here with it, um, then be able to present it first of next year, at least first quarter of next year to the full commission. Okay. Um, he's already gotten to the zoning section. Um, but we were running into issues where you know there were kind of contradictions between you know parking spaces for auditoriums in the city versus the county or um, fencing for pools. Um, it was listed in the city and not in the county, but their standards for fencing around all pools, state and federal. So um, kind of what we were looking at, um, looking through the charter, when both those ordinances were accepted as the Metro um, zoning ordinances, there's a sentence in there that states that if there's a conflict between the two, the more restrictive one would be enforced. So in solving his questions, that's what we have, we've used as our, our guide. So when, when two of them are conflicting in, in similar um, zoning, so like a, a regular commercial versus commercial, residential to residential, that's what we're doing. The more restrictive is the one we're gonna put in both and send it forward that way. Using that piece of the charter as our explanation of why we behaved in that manner, so that we don't get looked at um, from codes and zoning subcommittee or as planning as trying to change ordinances or you know sneak something in. You now our charter defines what it is, and all we did was make it abide by the charter. 
Any other discussion? Questions? Okay. Next is the uh, final plat expiration if no action taken. In other words, vested rights recorded at Arkansas. I'm not sure. The register of deeds. Oh, okay. Register of deeds. Uh, we talked last month about uh, people that have had projects approved, some in instances of going on for over, well over 10 years and stuff. And uh, we asked Jessica to get us some information on that, as I recall, the law and that type of thing on it. So uh, you have some information for us on that? So, Chairman, I, we looked through the subdivision regulations of Hartsville and Charlesdale County um, to see what was already available for you and your uh, existing uh, subdivision regs and zoning ordinances. And really what it boils down to is, well, I'm going to do a, a legal term. It depends. <laughs> you get a lot of that. get a lot of that. Um, so it depends on if um, bond, performance bonds or sureties were issued. They need to come back and request extensions or to execute on, uh, you know, acting, acting on the performance bond if those improvements were not made. But... TCA does have some, what well, I guess you all are very familiar with vested rights and the length of time that are available for the different um, types of plats that this group sees. So um, for preliminary plats, that vesting period is three years from the date of approval. Um, now if, uh, so from once they submit a preliminary plat, this body approves it. They have three years to take action on it. Um, if they start, uh, if they come back and submit a final plot, that then gives them that additional uh, two years to before they can start construction. So there's a five year window of time um, from a prelim to a final and then completion. Now for phase, pro and then once that final plat is, has been approved, there is a limit of 10 years for construction. So if they surpass that 10 years from the point of approval to construction, then that's well and beyond that extension that's allowed by TCA. Um, and then for phase projects, all it's very similar except for all phases, they do give an additional five years. So 15 years is the maximum um, vesting period uh, from approval of the preliminary plan all the way to completion. Mm -hmm. So that is what we have found in looking through both state law and from the Hartsville Trousdale subdivision regs. So how much of that do we have in our rate, those limits that you just mentioned? Um, well, in Hartsville Trousdale's, the sub regs, you've only got um, a one year stipulation on the decision for the final plat, which is again, at, is already counter so we're already to, state T law, aren't to we? TCA. <laughs> um, but again, I think it, the, in some communities, what I've seen with the one year improvement relates specifically to the bond. So if they don't complete the improvements as agreed upon with that surety bond, they need to come back and request a time extension. So that's typically what I what I see when it's required improvements. So that's what I think your your sub regs really. The go, only like, the only projects towards. I've ever known to really have bonds or anything are school projects, and. Uh, County probably county building projects. Well, are you major a performance bond for like roads, utilities? Okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. So yeah. uh, that would be in our subdivision regulations yeah. that they would have to put that up instead. Yeah, we do require that. So actually, um, I have yet to experience having someone do a performance bond, a surety bond. So, so no, it, they have not within the last. So like years. if we have a subdivision that's approved and they're going to build a road in it, mm -hmm. I mean, we know 
that if they would expect the county to take that road over, they have to build it according to the specifications of the road commissioner. And I think he puts them in touch with his engineer and they do do it that way. And then with utilities, they would get in touch with the water department and, and uh, whatever. It could be natural gas if it's close enough, if the, the mm -hmm. subdivision was going to be close enough to town to, for natural gas service and, and or sewer, you know. Uh, uh, Heather, do y'all require a uh, performance bond or? Depending on if there's a grant, it's going to take a lot of time. So there's a lot of time. Okay. Uh, in that wall. Now, if the city or if Trump County had property that they wanted to do a land list in the land, then, you, then that's when it could be also transferred and utilized within a different capacity that you're probably used to. So you would ask for an assurance bond. So I don't know if you ever have. You know, there was an ever became a, a building that became vacant for a while, and you all wanted to lease it to someone that would do some renovations. But then you, and then so y'all have the mechanism in place to require that mm -hmm. and stuff. Because if I'm not mistaken, and I very well could be, we just kind of if they've got to have a build a road, we planning and just kind of leave that up to Commissioner mm -hmm. Scruggs, Highway Commissioner, to build it to. That he signs off on. In other words, up to his department specifications. We don't we don't require anything on that. Am I right? I think we have something listed in our subdivision regulations talking about roads and how wide it has to be and the type of you know the degree of curve and everything else. I think it goes well, that detail. Well, it is, as far as bonds, I don't believe we do. You do. We do. Uh, yeah, do Article Three, Section One Hundred Two. Right. Yep. Okay. Yeah, then they have to go over the whole thing. I'm telling you, don't do it. Okay. 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 And didn't Hickory Ridge have to have a bond as well for their road? I have to talk with the building superintendent about that because that is an issue that is going to have to be addressed, and I've kind of drug my feet a little bit on it. Um, but so we don't have dead end roads that come through plant. Every dead end street here has a, a cul-de-sac that is 60 or 80 foot radius. Uh, when Hickory Ridge, the first phase came through, it was approved with a cul-de-sac and there was a stipulation given to him since it was gonna be done in phases that he would do a temporary cul-de-sac that wouldn't fully meet that but would give from the turnaround. And when he came in and got the phase two for Acorn Trail, when he got that approved, there was, and I, I do not know how it got through or because I was here for that. Um, now that might've been uh, a meeting that I missed and so I didn't catch it. But in doing the Hickory, uh, Acorn Trail, the second phase, when they went in and re-subdivided that, that section, they changed two of the lots of phase one, lots 13 and 12. And when they did that, they cut off what was the, the temporary cul-de-sac. And so now you have a dead end road into a rock bluff. And the rock bluff's, a, I'd say seven, eight foot tall. And it's solid rock. Um, now, there has been talk, but I haven't seen anything come before the um, codes and zoning uh, office as far as permitting or anything, but there is land that is behind and down, um, behind lot, uh, lot number 12. And there they did leave a road that could, you know, the right of way down through there that's 50 foot wide. Um, but as of right now, there is a cul-de-sac on Acorn, but there is nothing there and nothing on the books saying that he's going to build a third phase. And so right now we have a dead end road. The county owns up to the dead end. We took the superintendent took over that road when the two years were up. And no one it, it signed off. So technically but, the highway department through the county through the highway department approved it. Own, approved it. But now they own that land. That they, they don't because no. when he when he uh, re when he reconfigured lot thirteen, 
he took the land and went over. And so he took half that cul-de-sac away from a common area and put it onto that lot. Made it so into a building you, lot. Now you can't put Hartsville Cabinet, who owns the subdivision, cannot put the cul-de-sac where it says on their plat because they don't own that land anymore. They created a uh, non-conforming issue. They did. Themselves. Yes. But we signed off on it as planning commission and all, all the signatures are there for that. So the, the thing I'm- As I recall when they were doing the other side, is that the one called Acorn? Yes. The other side, you know, you know, our former building coach and- And he signed and, off on it. Right. And actually he recommended it. As I recall, I, I was aware of the way they changed the cul-de-sac and they weren't going to connect over. Um, but I wasn't aware until Rosalie and I started digging into what happened to the cul-de-sac uh, that 13 and 12 had actually been resurveyed and they changed those lots before they sold them. And those are now on record in the deeds office for those two. So what kind of authority would we have there? If that or when they came in for this so potential third phase, and at this point I don't know because they do have a right of way that would. Well, if they had a third down. phase with a road going down there, it had to be a cul-de-sac at the end of that one. At the end of that, to, uh, yeah. yeah. Or it would connect to if the land goes far enough, it would connect to New Hall Town. Right. right. And so then you would have. A, do a they own land there. all the way out to New Hall Town? I believe that the the property that they own does go all the way down. Um, it's, it's kind of the property map as we all know aren't exactly accurate and so it's a little muddled when you get down there whether that because he had bought another piece of property is my understanding to make it okay and so I, and if it does connect i mean if you can go in and then come out on all town that as far as schools go that would be a, yep. a different situation that would then what's current there now would be and that type of thing because you'd have a thoroughfare. And also with that 50-foot right-of-way, it would allow us to possibly enforce him taking that 50-foot right-of-way and putting the cul-de-sac right there. Right. Just north of Block 12. So he does own land that he could put the cul-de-sac for the road at this point. Um, but that, that has been my question, is what authority do we have in enforcing? Because I mean, it's stated in our... Um, Subdivision regulations. Um, he agreed to it on his, uh, his initial deal. But then what he did was approved and signed off by I mean, all the mm -hmm. all all parties and powers of the time. Yeah. Well, that's a uh, Mr. Beller question, obviously. And it is. That's a, and it's not something I can just put up in an email. And try to no, explain all the no, it'd be a long email. So I, I've, <laughs> I've been trying to catch times where I can show him the plats and explain the situation right. and then and go from there. And I might have to be a little more deliberate in my tracking him down. Yeah, the, uh, where it goes to a rock wall, yes. is there room past that rock wall? No. The cul -de -sac? no, he he took the land above that rock, the, that bluff, and half that of uh, that cul-de-sac is now part of lot 13. He turned so, it into a building lot. Yes, somebody built on it. Mm -hmm. Yes, and there's a house built there. Mm -hmm. Oh, there is a house already there. That's right. I believe that's his son Hunter's place. No, oh, okay, okay. That's the last house on the east side of it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It is. Okay. Well, it became conforming when we approved the new uh, layout later on. We actually. Changed it would have would have was a non-conforming, but after we approved it, it's now conforming. Sounds a lot of record, right? Mm -hmm. Right. But we now have a subdivision with a dead end, which our regulations say we can't have. Right. So, because my my point was not necessarily to cast blame on the builder. He had it signed off. I mean, he was told he could do it. He did it. My yeah. point is, is that something that because it is still in phases that he still has to make right now that we've caught it, or is it the county's problem and the county has to make it right because the county doesn't own the land where the cul-de-sac would have to go at this point. 
And it, to me, that's just more evidence of what we've been saying in this committee for the last couple of years now is uh, management that we need to have over our own things and stuff and, and, uh, and that type of thing. And I'm hoping by going through this cleaning up process, we can find, and we have found a couple that will be coming before the planning, finding holes as Rick is combining things. He's, he's starting to see where, okay, well, you don't have anything here like the, the fencing, you know, around the pools. So it states, you know, that you, and it was a, a four foot fence, wasn't it, Rosalie, that you yes. discussed? Tom says four feet. Well, if I'm not mistaken, the regulation for that is supposed to be six or seven foot. No, the regulation is, is four feet, but what was listed in our ordinance was three feet. Well, it's three feet. So that was a discrepancy. Right. So our ordinance was not even. Wasn't just even, like we just wasn't even legal. Yeah, just like we discussed earlier in this meeting, it was another part that you right. know, we're out of compliance with state and federal laws and what we said. Well, again, I appreciate Rick undertaking this for us. And, and uh, He's had his hands full. <laughs> and I, I truly, for no more than he has charged us, I, I think his money well spent with the county. Well, it's a good thing he's from here. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. <laughs> I, am, I am grateful for working with you. Right. Right. Sure. You want to do that? Yes, Okay. At this time, we're going to kind of take a recess to uh, honor one of our own longtime members. Not to say that he's old. No. He's just How long old. is he again? How long is he? I think uh, Frank Ferguson. What's the burden he says? Mm -hmm. I think Thomas came on not long after I did. Mayor Cothran appointed me. That was when it was the old, we had the city council and, and we had separate government. Had the city of Hartsville, actually the town of Hartsville, and then Trasdale County. And so that would have been, that predated the uh, vote to go Metro. And um, uh, I kind of got ringed into it. The mayor asked, I just got elected vice mayor and he asked me, they're going to redo the city ordinances. Would you sit on this committee while they do it? Just make sure it looks good for us. And that's, that's ever how long that's been. That was in my first year as a city council. I try to remember when I got elected. Yeah. Uh, David Cothran was mayor, so you, if any of you remember that, <laughs> some of you were still in school. <laughs> Probably elementary school. <laughs> but, uh, oh, Thomas has, uh, one, it's been a pleasure to serve with Thomas because he's been a friend of mine for our whole lives, we went to school together, played football together. Uh, I had his kids in school. Uh, his daughter was my assistant principal at the elementary and then took over after I retired, Demetrius. And so uh, we've, we've had the pleasure of knowing and working with each other forever. And me and him and Mr. Nall are there. And uh, so uh, I guess if you played football in the 60s, you can considered old man, right? <laughs> but uh, Thomas, we don't have the words to express how much we appreciate your service. You've been an invaluable member of this committee uh, and, and uh, all the stuff that comes with being a member of this committee, a lot of times it's like this, not much controversy and stuff, but then when there is, it can really hit the fan. And uh, and working with county commissions, trying to get resolutions passed and that type of thing. But uh, personally, from the bottom of my heart, and then with all the uh, help of the rest of the committee, I want you to know how much we appreciate everything you've done. And it's gonna, not going to be right. It's coming in here, not seeing you there. Mm -hmm. Y'all that had anybody besides us three had Miss Chipwood in school, English teacher. She had a favorite st saying about procrastination. Yeah, procrastinating. And uh, she she nailed him on that. Y'all yeah. know what procrastination is? Yes. Okay. I figured you did. But she used that word often yeah. in school, especially with me and <coughs> Mr. Nolfer. <Nauber. laughs> Dylan Dollar. <laughs> <Fox Scott. laughs> 
the, but the funny part was Ms. Chitwood was the secretary of this committee when I first came on and served until she just could not walk anymore and her health just went. And she would never take a hint on this show. She refused to sit in that chair and read the minutes. She read the minutes every meeting. Back then, that's what you did. She had to stand. And she had told me before, if it, when it gets to where I can't stand to read the minutes, I'll, I'll retire. And, uh, but that, I mean, it's just one of those things that a lady of her, you know, her, that was the way they were brought up, you know, parliamentary procedure and all that kind of stuff, you know. And uh, she was awesome. But, uh, Thomas would come in a little late some nights and, and uh, she would uh, jump him. <laughs> I learned if you couldn't make it on time, just don't come. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Save it in her lap. She go out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when I come home, she was still here. Yeah. Because I remember she was stand up. Right. She read everyone. That's I right. That's right. Well, I can say I, it's, it's been a pleasure for the years I have served on it. I hope. The young folks don't run into nothing like the rock, another rock quarry or the new the new plant. Yes. You know, yes. it's, it's a, LES, yeah, yeah. it's uranium company. It's uh, it's been a pleasure. I've learned a lot. I hope I've been invaluable to the community. Uh, I've enjoyed, but uh, it's it's time for me to go. It's some of the old young folks. So the mayor is uh, trying to find a replacement. So uh, I'm sure he, he's been pretty good about that. He's talked several of y'all. <laughs> I, mean, I kind of recruited Shudder, but uh, she has me to blame. But I, I know the last few there, the mayor can't blame me for y'all. <laughs> y'all got to go to Jack on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, and I but, forgot her name, the new lady. What's her Katie. name? Katie. Katie Dillon. Yeah, Katie. Uh, we wish she could be here tonight. She, uh, mm -hmm. I think, will be a, a very uh, a fresh voice uh, for the community and stuff on, on this committee and stuff. So, but Thomas, I'd like to give you this. Shut the Vidette lady. The Vidette lady's not here. Get your picture. Uh, yeah. Shut her. Here. You there had, we go. You had Loco Parentis of the Vidette lady. They know school. Most people know what that means. That's in lieu of parents. <laughs> <laughs> That's a school <laughs> term. It ain't got nothing to do with what, with what I was doing. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Good pleasure. Good to be here, We have uh, Kate. Refreshments. And refreshments and everything. So let's take a recess and and uh, uh, partake of that. And, uh, and I apologize. It's people. It's people. Oh, is it up? It's my favorite shirt. Sure. It's a it's a party day. <laughs> That <laughs> 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 My name in high school was touched by the because I refused to tell people to shut up. What a big part that is, you're going to throw it I'm <laughs> sorry.
The tea yeah. in the middle is sweet, the jug is unsweet, and there's water. So. Yes, ma'am. What do you do? Thank you. That's very kind of you. Uh, would you want? Uh, oh, oh no, I've got water. Okay. I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, I heard a little of it. I'm not much on jamborees. I, I hated jamborees when I played. I think if you add the total score together, Red Bull and beat us 20 to 14. If you add the JV and the uh, first team, first team would have won 14 13. JV lost six to nothing. So if you add the four quarters together, I guess we got the 20 to 14. If I was from Red Bull, that's the way I'd say it. Yeah. Well, Billy got a grand bowl in play. Uh huh. So everybody hates it. Mm -hmm. The big school's on the big school. The big school's on the big school. They're 2 0. Yeah. I don't like it. Pretty good size boys. Billy's. Last time I saw him, he was. I haven't seen him in a couple of years. Who's that? Y'all haven't seen him. Robbie Atwood's son. So it's uh, one of the line. Of course, he's won the state wrestling championship the last two years in a row in his weight division. That kid is put together. So yeah, he's to, he's, that's a man. That ain't he's kid. That's a man. <laughs> yeah. 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 Probably works on agility and everything. Oh, Costco makes the best quickies. They want to come after it at the hospital. It's a great Well, there's one of I've never seen a kid turn down cake before. You what? I've never seen a young man turn down cake before. This is my son, Ethan. Hi, Ethan. He's a sophomore. He's high school and in the market. So, what do you do? One of Mr. Joins' guys. That's hard work. Hey, I'm telling you, they work in bands. The kids work. Yeah. We're the ones that are in college, they have 50 pieces of eight, seven, eight hours. They work. We will. They get, most of them are on scholarship. We have several kids, band kids that have gone from here to places on scholarship. That is the worst. I think we had one question. Because now it's going to be probably in the future cases. All the cases are canceled from the day. You can go to tomorrow. Right. 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 Right.
That's way back in the world. That's way, way back. Well, he said he died. <laughs> <laughs> One of our band teachers, and he ain't been here a long time, <laughs> left here and went on. He's now a big wheel in the, in the State Board of Education office down in Nashville. He's been able to help us with teacher certifications and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's good. I was just having Oh, uh, Mr. Griffin had passed away. Yeah, oh, is that right? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Yeah. I like him. I know there was a period when my kids first joined the band, but they went through, there was like a band director, a yeah. different one. That was after every year. Yeah. I should have I said too. years. People talk about band, you know, they talk about I'm gonna tell you, those kids work. Yeah, they do, they work they do. hard. Imagine being on Tennessee Friday, Friday. I hope that, uh, you know, they play Notre Dame in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. I hope they take the band up. I'm sure they will. They'll be on the spot. They're going to be on TV. Oh, yeah. yeah they'll, have, they'll have theirs. I'm going. I thought the mayor was, had something arranged where their band was supposed to be coming he here. He was working on that. Yeah. That's the greatest band I've ever seen anywhere. Hey, she was um, back. Especially their, with their drill team. Mm -hmm. drill, drill team was something else. You remember they used to come from the back? Yeah. You, know, you, know, you, know, you, know, you could hear them coming. They were all <laughs> they, They'd stop way back. That's Bob and Joe Willis' house back at that, at that church back there. You could hear them more. They, you could hear them all the place. It's actually that Galveston thing. He used it's to be the, very low. Well, he used to be the, one of the best. That guy in front of the Oh, yeah. Oh, he very yeah. And he's eight years old. He's still talking about it. They didn't know. Some people have that. So much I remember the first time I wanted to join. And I said I wanted to play the flute. He's like, no. I said, okay, we'll let the it. No, I was like, the tuba. And I was like, I'm going to go to the tuba. And I was like, I'm going to go to the no, 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 that's what you ought to do. Get you out of the doghouse, maybe. Well, let's have a little piece. Can you take a piece? Huh? I said, if Dolly wants a piece, you can take her to peace. <laughs> okay. There might even be some left for Demetrius. Right, Kathy. Right, Kathy. Right, Kathy. Well, guys, y'all want to? We can kind of eat and finish up if y'all want to do that. Uh, next on our agenda is enforcement of site plans and and uh, as built and what checks and balances are available. I'm not sure. I don't remember what our discussion was. Do you remember? It was in line with the site plan. Call the sack thing. Oh, okay. Also, so we kind of really already talked about that thing. Well, for our as built, 
on the third. Do what now, Thomas? Will we require a as built? As site plans are they monitored and make sure that they build according to the site plan? Yes. I think you gotta go around and check it. It goes around and checks to make sure we need it. We need it. Yes, sir. I think. Maybe if you pull the road superintendent signs off on something, and maybe he don't know the whole that it's supposed to be a cold sack. Maybe that's his responsibility. I know, but he maybe he don't know it, or it would be helpful he, if he knew that or something before he signed it. Well, how? I don't know. He has to see the plot. I know. He has to sign the actual plan. It's on there. Okay. And he keeps copying. So, I mean, I don't know, you know, yeah, yeah. and he, you know, and uh, the secretary is the last one to sign. And part of the secretary's duties are to make sure that every, everybody else has signed before they do. Well, I understand, but what, you know, if it's a year before he goes back out there to observe, you know, the subdivision has to be built or whatever. I'm assuming he has the copy to go back out there and follow it up. When he signs off on it at the end, he should. I mean, he's got yeah. it. What he did with it. Is there some kind of like sign off at the end to say, "Hey, we're going to accept this because it abides by all this flat here," or is it just, "Hey, it looks good, carry on." Right. So there needs to be some type of process, as she was saying, that there needs to be checks and balances, as in, okay, how does that happen? And I haven't seen anything as far as what the whole total process is. Is that something that we put in place or is that something that? Well, that was going to be my question. What authority do we have over an elected official to do that? Well, so let me, I'll cover the two places in your subdivision regulations that do provide kind of a check. Um, so you do have development standards for mobile home parks that allow for the review um, and check and if it doesn't if their development plan or as they develop doesn't meet the approved plan um, the building permit can be pulled by um, the code official by you all okay yeah um, so and then in if there was a bond for an improvement water sewer road and the inspection turned up that it was unsatisfactory or what did not meet the, as you agreed upon, or the construction standards were lacking, um, you can call in the bond or require the developer to build it back or to meet that satisf satisfaction to that standard. Um, so that's what you already have. Now, TCA does within the power of a planning commission, uh, give you the authority to terminate um, upon a written determination by the local government under the, I'm gonna read this so I don't get it wrong. Under the following circumstances pursuant to subdivision F2, when the applicant violates the terms and conditions specified in the approved development plan or building permit, Provided the applicant is given 90 days from the date of notification to cure the violation, provided further that the lo local government may, upon a determination that such is the best interest of the community, grant in writing an additional time period to cure the violation. So essentially you can, during that vesting period, if they do not meet the what you have approved as their preliminary development plan or their building permit, you can terminate their that action. So what happens in that case? Build a road, house is already there for the minute. It's two years of time the county take over. What happens in that case? That's why you shut down people's road to get in and out of their house or well in, in that case Her, the county just wants to take it over and the builder of the subdivision would still have that responsibility. No, yeah. he doesn't until it's well, done. Take it home. Then it's on the HO. It's then it's the owners of the subdivision. That's that's why it's a really good practice to have 
performance bonds or a surety instrument requirement. Just to protect those people who are buying from the SLP. Because that's what I've talked to David about, uh, trying to keep their issue from falling on the people that live within that subdivision. Uh, but basically, in any development, whatever goes wrong at some point in time is going to fall upon the people that actually live there. I mean, that's just right. the, way, the way it is. And again, he's an elected official. If he accepts that road, then the county is responsible for upkeep and all that goes with it in perpetuity. You would hope that he would not accept any roads that aren't. And I know that he assigned, he has them talk to his engineer and, and that I know water was a big issue in y'all subdivision and and Jason even made the point in here one night that he had built it to what the what uh, right what they had told him to do the engineer and Mr. Scruggs had told him to do and I mean you can't really fault him for that you know if they you know that's on our elected officials at that point doesn't help the neighbors any if there's still a problem you know so Mr. Chairman um it seems to me, based on our discussion and what you found, Disco, um, what has happened is the builder of the subdivision was given a, lack of a better term, an illegal uh, variance on the cul-de-sac um, because it was signed off on. And because of that, he's not, he can't be held liable for what the county told him was, right. was good to go. Right. Um, and the individual who would have started the process of granting that variance without the authority to do so is no longer employed by the county. And so does it then fall on the, the road superintendent then to make that subdivision compliant? That's why we have attorneys. Because mm -hmm. I don't know the answer. And uh, I mean, I hate to keep saying that, but I mean, and, yeah. that that's the only, uh, that's why they have you know, courts and, you know, just like the Rock Quarry, it's gone through the uh, uh, first step of the appellate process. I don't know if it's going through another. You hear everything, but uh, that's that's the process. So would an as-is checklist for those signing off on final plats um, be something that we need to create in this committee? Just to... I think it's a, I think it's a good step. Uh, I mean, at least it gives some sort of a check to the others. A lot of times, just a little reminder, something like that helps. I mean, I always wanted all the help I could get, you know, and, yeah. you know, and, and I like checklists, you know, because it gives you that. Mind you, what you wish. Well, that may be the things in the recent new city of the city department where someone likes to have so many tabs for their subdivision and they don't require that many tabs yet. So that, that would be I do too. I agree. So how do we need to uh, proceed? Is that in our regulations as built already, or is that something we need to uh, I recommend? Don't know if there's a as built checklist. I know there's as built requirements for improvements when you, especially when you're talking about performance bonds. So would you say we would need to create our own checklist? I would, and it would probably be best as in an appendix. Similar to the way they would fall in the subdivision regulation, so that is something we could do as a body here. When does when does this apply though? At, at what stage? You know, if you've got multiple stages of the subdivision, when are we sort of here to make sure? That's a great. That's a great question. You, that's really all good. The way through. I mean, because he could say, "Well, I've got another stage that I don't have to do this. I'm catch it in stage three that might drag out for you know five, ten years." That's true. Because I mean, we're we're ten years now. On that subdivision, and like I said, he hasn't even, you know, pulled permits. What is that? That's that would that's great question. Well, that, How would that end? Yeah, yeah. These will be signed yeah. off on too. I mean, I would exactly. say it could happen with the others. I'm agreeing because you're doing you're signing the plat at the beginning. You're right. Not, you're not doing this at the end. You got to go back ten years from now. Was it twenty thirty three? And that's when this checklist is going to have to be performed to make sure. I think even as the, as along the way, as you were saying, the different phases, just like when we did the approval for the RV campground, 
it's in three different phases. And he's already been in the office saying, okay, I'm about to try to start phase one. What do I need to do? What permits do I need to pull? And so I think maybe we need to create a process map of what the checklist looks like and then finalize that checklist and put it in place and maybe even file it as a legal document, maybe with the register of deeds going along with the subdivision plan so that it's on record that there is something there. And if we're protecting it, we're protecting it also. I'm sorry? So like when we hit certain zones, we're able to hit certain milestones and become a chair. And you can always hold, a, I've seen some communities hold final COs for the last lots until all the improvements are made. I do know that it is not a uh, <clears throat> a potential negative impact. That came out. That's why we were coming up with the monetary thing. Uh, last month we talked about uh, they had we were going to hold so much money until they got the uh, CO uh, for something. I can't remember exactly, but we were talking about that last month. You know. Well, and I think, too, if, like, the different phases, if they don't meet all the different check items for each phase, we don't have to issue building permits. I mean, changing, you know, examples, looking at the campground, doing the three phases, he could get everything checked off and everything's fine on phase one, and then in six, seven years, start his phase two, and only do you know do half of it just enough to start getting people in there and say well I'm still working on on my phase and things pass and he made changes to what was checked off on phase one and well phase one's already been signed off on unless someone knew the changes that he made and caught him in that act you don't really I mean there's not a process right now we don't have anything to to go back and verify. Once it's signed off, everyone seems to, it's, it's what I'm noticing is once it's oh, signed it? off, it's forgotten about. You're right. And it's we're expecting the next. It's a done deal. Yeah. Yeah. And we're expecting them to do what they say it and our uh, code department to hold their feet to the fire from it. And that's not really well, fair all the way around. Yeah. And if you, if you were to require a bond, this body can only grant, I think currently right now in your subdivision regs, grant a timeline of two years. So if they took longer than two years, they would have to come back before you request an extension or this commission could call in the bond for the improvement. So after four, you release it after two years? If they, don't if they don't, if they meet the requirement, you can sign off on it. And then in another phase, you can require another performance bond. That's the... That's what bonds are set to do is provide that check and not put the bill on the government or the new landowners. So it sounds so like we have a process there. You do have a we process. Have yep. Or requiring it. That's really our, we might not need an ass bill checklist. We've really got something with more teeth in it. Yeah, what we're talking about. I mean, that to, for the for them to release the bond, the improvements have to meet the standards. And it's already in our our regs. We just, she said it conveys. We just got to enforce it because a two year period it keeps it fresh. Mm -hmm. right? Every time they okay, well, my bond's running up, and then that's something Rosalie can contract in that office mm -hmm. as the bonds are starting to expire. And then she can notify them and. They can either, you know, she either inspects it and signs off and it's released, or they have to either come back, get an extension, or we pull it. Okay. Is, is she notified when that's released? So how, how will she know? Is she going to set a place over that much more work for her to keep track over here? You know, how does she know when these bonds expire and things of that nature? Well, right now, we don't really have any bonds. Right. But say you get but she would have to set up a process. Yeah, right. and it would be. A lot, a lot yeah. of work I was yeah, she would have to come. Go That's why you have software. It, I was going to say, isn't that software supposed to help you with that? Two years. That's what I thought. Oh, okay. So we got some yeah, discussion. That software that we talked about last time. Mm -hmm. Do a bond and stuff like that. 
you can add that into with the permitting software. You can add trackers and things like that. So, and then is that okay? You just gotta go out and make sure this cul de sac is into the and all that, or is that going to be back to the highway department? Or? I think it would be a collaborative effort, wouldn't you think? Uh, I mean, I agree. It's been a lot of work on you, just one person. Because I, I know that we will be keeping site plans, you know, and they have their own copy, but, you know, we could always say, okay, well, here's mine, where's yours, let's, let's make sure this is good. So, and, and I think with the awareness, you know that this is what's going to be happening. That it'd be a lot of most buildings they build in other counties. I'm sure they're used to oh, this. Yeah. It's just so a lot worse than what we put. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's in our regulations. So really, I mean, we just got to start enforcing what we've already got. So I think really, and Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we start enforcing performance bonds. Well, we shouldn't have to make a motion to enforce our own rules. <laughs> <laughs> just, just I think I think we just need to give uh, uh, Ms. Rosalie the the we want this enforced from now on, and you have our support to do it, and you have the uh, legal means to do so because we're supposed to have been doing it anyway. I, I just figured by making a motion that makes it all. I don't know that I want to answer the question if somebody asks, you know, why'd you make a motion to enforce your own rules? I don't think that go too well. Fair enough. I'm okay. withdraw my motion. Then. If we need to at some point in time, uh, if, you know, I, I wholeheartedly agree with the spirit of the motion. Okay. What All is, right. What is the amount that you have to put up for the form of songs? It's usually one and a half times the cost of all the improvements. I haven't seen that in y'all's ordinance yet, but typically it's one and a half or one and a quarter of estimated cost. Well, if it's not in our ordinance, then we pretty much gutted ourselves to begin mm -hmm. with. Then. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely something to look at. And typically you, and I was trying to find, see if you had a um, performance bond certificate in your appendix. That would be also something to look oh, no. for. No, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> Could you Thanks. ask David to look and see if we have that? He's looking at our rig. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yeah, usually, usually it will say how much you're able to go above and beyond, but, but typically you'll ask, you will ask either you have an engineer to estimate, to confirm the estimate, and if they agree, um, would then, you agree that we need to amend that though to have a the process actually written out? Yeah, I you definitely. Probably, you definitely should have your the amount that you're able to go to. Right now, it just says the planning commission can make an estimate and require that. Okay. Wow. Well, yeah. 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 I'd rather not do that. I'd rather be specific. Yeah. Now, is, since this is already in there, we're adding something to it. Is that something that? this body can do and add to our regulations or does this have to go to the county commission? It's a subdivision regulation. Um, I, I think we have the power. I do. The I, that's what I mean. I think we do. I just wanted to yep. make sure. I think we do. If it was a zoning ordinance, it would not be, but it's a subdivision right. regulation. Right. Okay. So let's, uh, uh, we want to, what you say, what, what was normal? How about I take that back and look at sure. a comparison? Okay. Oh, yeah, we said next month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do that, please. Yeah. Because we don't, you know, uh, normal's good. I don't want to get accused of being abnormal. Yeah. I've dealt with that 70 years. <laughs> I won't procrastinate. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Chitwood strikes again. Yeah. <laughs> Her other big word was, uh, she called you a nickel poop. Oh. Now that's an old one. <laughs> Y'all remember that? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Last, I think it's last on our agenda, on our discussions, is the commercial building design guidelines. It's now in uh, resolution form. And we have been working on this for quite some time. 
And it really kind of putting it off until now, we're giving the county commission time to go through the budget process, get their budget going, get the new year up and running and everything. And uh, one, I want to commend everyone for their work on this. It was not easy. Uh, and uh, it, uh, you know, we're voting on every on everything. And I think we've come up with a good, fair document that uh, I think it's always good and fair when you can say that not everybody on this committee agrees with everything in it. And, uh, uh, and it, it's a compromise and it's a, I think that's a, I think that's good. So look over that if you need to for a moment. And then if there's anyone that would like to make a motion to, uh, to pass this and send it on to the county commission, we I think it's appropriate to do so tonight. Then uh, David is our, the, I'm sure he'll go to his committee then, and he can make the appropriate judgment as to when to present it to the full commission. What did we ever decide the difference in the already board and the board? It was the, the amount of concrete that is in the fiber. The hardy board, the concrete's mixed throughout. The cementitious, it was a coating on the outside, the exterior of the board. Yeah, that's good question. Any others? I will say, I, I think that, and I don't know if this is just done for our benefit or just for the, the commission's benefit, but actually having the pictures of the materials, I think that should stay with the ordinance. Oh, I agree. Yeah. So that as it is put into law, here's examples, not just changing of words. Well, as someone who served on the commission for 20, a little over 20 years, I always found it helpful to have examples and things. It's something you can refer to and stuff because not we can't expect all of our county commissioners to be builders and know just like Mitch with the de, you know the definition there. We can't expect every, all of them to know the difference and that type of thing. I had to go to the supply place to get that definition. Well, and and you know a lot of them are just going to kind of uh, serve you know kind of scan over this and stuff and uh, but. People actually tend to look at pictures more and check it out more, and then if they have a quick, go back to the reading and look and and see. So I think that's a, I think that's a very appropriate. Any other questions, comments? Have like physical examples too in your office, right? Is that what we talked about last time? I'm trying. Okay, so it's you know it's getting difficult to get right different examples of the yeah. And they say pictures are what the thousand That's true. Were you looking for motion or whatever? Well, this is before the committee, yes. So if someone would like to make a motion, we're all ready for it. There's no more, but there'll be another chance for discussion after the motion. Are you indicating you're ready to make a motion? To do what? I'm going to put you on the spot. To do what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Would someone who actually knows what they're talking about like to make a motion? <laughs> I know, but uh, you didn't know I was going to put you on the spot. Okay, I have a motion from Mr. Nolan to send the... Uh, uh, Harshville Trialsville County Ordinance doesn't have a number yet, but it's an ordinance to amend the zoning ordinance of Harshville, Tennessee, Article 4, by adding sections 4.143. Have a motion to do that. Do I have a second? Second by uh, Shutter. Any other discussion, questions, or anything? I'm sorry. 64 is correct. Yes. Yes. I, I just didn't hear. Sixty forty on the wall. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just didn't hear. Uh, all in favor? Are we ready to vote? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say no. Does pass unanimously. Uh, and I, unless I'm mistaken, 
that's all for tonight, guys. If anybody'd like to make a motion to yes, sir. Can one more thing? Yes, sir. Uh, I got brought up in our discussions with Rick as he's going through um, everything. So we, when our subdivision regulations didn't really help us much in our zoning, it, when it talks about um, how you know the size of lot sizes, it talks about fire protection. <laughs> But we couldn't find a definition of what that means. Now I know we've always used that 500 foot from a fire hydrant as you know sufficient as fire protection, but we don't have a defined definition of that. And he was asking for that. Um, so is I, there a I, common definition that you know of that? That you're aware of? You may not. I just I have not. Okay, I just wondered because we couldn't even find during my meeting where we were getting the 500 foot was our definition for fire protection. I just know that's the standard we've always discussed here. Does it's Rick usually know like the, li the line for a hose line. Mm -hmm. Sorry. My words were escaping me. It's usually the a hose link for the fire department. Okay. But they're able to connect and get to. So since we do have that stated in, you know, as a definer of for lot sizes, he was wanting to have an actual written definition of what fire protection was. Does he know of an example in another uh, I can talk municipality or county that we could look at and see? And if, uh, uh, if not, and, and if it's like, I mean, it makes sense that it's the length of the hoses that you can put together. You can't hardly have it pass there, you know. Well, it would tanker trucks and whatnot. Mm -hmm. and, you know, like I said, we've always come, all the discussions I've ever heard here when we're talking about subdivisions. We always reference that 500 um, foot to a fire hydrant. And so uh, that's kind of, that's what I put forward to him. And he's like, yeah, but I can't find it. And he even, I mean, he, he even admitted that that's what he had heard. But when he dug into our stuff, he couldn't find any definition for fire protection. I would also add uh, GPM, so gallons per minute, because it's not just the distance it's the, also the, the line flow the, the flow, flow yeah. yeah the capacity of the water the rating base yeah right area. i think fire protection also is, is about as broad as the one that you brought to mm -hmm. discussed again earlier that could be your four hour fire on the wall and that could be everything from fire suppression to yeah that's discussed in a lot of commercial projects yeah yeah so that, that that's, terminology. Well, wait, and that's why I wasn't wanting to try to address something in the subcommittee. I wanted to bring it before us so that we could come up with a definition. To why don't you ask that. him if he knows of uh, some places that have a good example of that we could look at and stuff, mm -hmm. and, and um, we can discuss that next month. Do you look on the horizon? Do you think it's going to, our agenda may be somewhat similar to this for the next month or so? Or, I know it's too early to really, I just wondered what you think. And, um, I think there is maybe a site plan or two that's going to be coming forward for us to look okay. at. Um, but not real busy enough that we couldn't have a good discussion item up there. Agreed. Okay. okay. And you just jinxed it. I'm sorry. And you just jinxed it. <laughs> oh, so probably. Probably right. All right. Anything else to come before us tonight? Other than, uh, again, I want to wish Mr. Harper well. Yes, thank you. Uh, we uh, we'll continue to have our meeting. We typically with the, uh, the old geezer section up at the minute mark. That's Saturday nine o'clock. Oh, Thomas is a charter member of the <laughs> of the minute mark old geezer society up there. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Again, I I've been blessed with you all. Hope y'all don't have no ill. Controversy. We do. We'll call you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll call you. Come for your opinion. Yes, we'll call that. Maybe a member of it. Yes, I'm going to ID you too. There you go. All right. Guys, appreciate all your time tonight. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? We're gone, man. <laughs>